And for more on this story, we are now being joined by Adrian Kalmel. He is a fellow at Arabian Peninsula Institute and Middle Eastern scholar. Now, he's also the author of a forthcoming book, Hezbollah. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, Hezbollah has denied. Lebanon has condemned the attack. Hezbollah have not taken responsibility either. Israel's Foreign Minister Israel Katz has said that it is approaching an all-out war against Hezbollah and, and Lebanon. Now, how are things panning out? Do you think this is the most serious escalation we can see so far? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, this is by far the seri most serious escalation that we've seen. Um, we've been climbing this escalation ladder for about 10 months now, and it always seemed like it was going to be one miscalculation away from turning into something really ugly. And this was always a two-front war, actually a multi-front war, Gaza to the south and Lebanon to the north. Uh, Lebanon, uh, Hezbollah, and Israel from October 8th have been exchanging fire and, and climbing up this escalation ladder. Now, Hezbollah is now claiming to deny any involvement when before they were um, actually applauding it and claiming it uh, earlier in the day they had launched 30 missile uh, 30 rockets and then another 10 and it's undeniable this is a Falak one uh, rocket that's um, straight from the Islamic Republic of Iran and uh, Hezbollah fired it. So I don't think there's any disputing who did it. Now I think Hezbollah is trying to put the toothpaste back in the bottle and that's difficult to do because now they realize that they made a mistake. I know, and Netanyahu has said that he is ready to strike. He has outright said that and he has cut short his trip to the US. Now, how are things looking for him on the domestic front as well? Now he's, you know, earlier before this attack would have happened, would we have expected that kind of action from Netanyahu, that he'll go out and say he's ready for that? And how is the U.S. reacting to this? Well, th that's the interesting part, because, you know, it, it, part of this campaign, we see the military action, the bloodshed and all that. But also the other part of it is to create political instability within Israel. And it's to uh, and we see um, former leaders like Ehud Barak calling for a two state solution immediately. Peace on that northern border. Peace. You know, no more actions um, when they're looking for kind of diplomatic solutions to a, a kind of military problem here. Um, it's hard. To say where this goes from here, uh, there's already been one targeted strike, I believe, in Tyre in response um, by Israel. But we'll see in the coming days how they respond. Uh, the U.S., as, as far as uh, what the messaging will be from the U.S., it's going to be the same message. It's a weak message. It's saying don't escalate, don't create a widening war. Um, but the war has been widening with the same message. Um, I mean, this is the def definition of insanity of saying and repeating the same thing over and over and expecting different results. It's just gotten worse. Hmm. Now that you mentioned Gaza as well, how do you think now will this event impact the ceasefire deal? Well, uh, Hamas already rejected Israel's revisions to any type of ceasefire deal. And I think at the end of the day, we have to remember that any type of ceasefire deal, uh, it ultimately rests with Hamas. Uh, they hold the hostages. The hostages are leverage. And as, as long as they have that leverage, I don't see Hamas coming to any type of ceasefire deal. I think they will always kind of stall regroup, and then replan, and then attack. Adrian Kalamov, thank you so much for joining us and giving your insights. Thank you for having me again.